Hey, check it out, man. Perfect fit, man. Perfect shirt. Perfect fit. Appreciate you, Herbs. Now, ooh, we got some wide receiver galore questions coming up. First one came from my guy, Big Drizzy. He said, what's up, Engraven? I'm currently watching your Miles Boykin video. We all knew he was done. It's sad, but hey, I hope he gets his burn on another squad. I hope so, too. I really do. I hope he goes and, and gets more of an opportunity uh, so we can really see what Miles Boykin got. Uh, but anyway, he said, my question is, who do you think we should sign in his place? Or do you think they are waiting to the draft to pick up somebody? Thanks for taking the time to answer. Hope everything is all good your way. Oh, everything is great. Especially this shirt, which I love so much. Um, Miles Boykin, I, I, um, as far as replacing, uh, this is where Ravens would get a guy early. Um, because I think for Miles Boykin initially, maybe they might have envisioned uh, him being their guy. Uh, but when him and Lamar, they just, they never really got it going. They never got it going consistently. It was a play here, it was a play there, but it, it just wasn't enough. Um, so it just, it didn't end up working out. Um, so you don't, you're not really, you're not necessarily replacing Miles Boykin. Um, you're not replacing him because the Ravens, they never really got that consistent uh, impact from him as a wide receiver. They got it from him as a blocker, but as a wide receiver. So you're not really replacing him, um, but you are and should add a significant weapon uh, to upgrade. So I think um, if they don't if they don't draft any, I mean, if they don't trade for anybody, um, then and because I, I don't expect it. Like you got who's out there? Jarvis Landry. You still got Julio <laughs> out there. You still got out there Beckham Jr. Um, so I don't expect them to sign any of those guys. I don't. Uh, Julio Jones will be very Raven like though. Um, but I don't expect them to sign any of those guys. Uh, so I think the draft uh, is when that next wide receiver will come, uh, whoever it may be. Bum bum bum. Next question came from Drum Drum. He said, "I'll be honest. I was one of those people that thought you were crazy for thinking of drafting a wide receiver early, and that we have plenty of weapons, but not anymore. You're good at convincing. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Still, probably might be a little bit crazy, but still, he said, with that in mind, I hope the outcome from night one of the draft is we pick a wide receiver at 14, and the Ravens do a trade to get another first round pick and use it on whatever the best player available is on defense that is ready to play now. Now." Uh, I guess my question is, what is your dream night one outcome in the draft? Yeah, that that would be. I would love that. Um, I would love. You said dream though. Dream. Um, if they had three first round picks, if they got three first round picks, if one was Jordan Davis, uh, one was. I know what they saying Pickens probably gonna be in the second round. Um, but if. If Ravens, I wouldn't be mad if they got him late in the first. Reason being because if you risk it, if you like, if you 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 could risk it, you could be like, oh, he's dropping. Oh, we could look at some teams in front of us. Oh, they probably won't pick a wide receiver. All right, and they snatch him. So I, I wouldn't be mad if they went out and got a got a wide receiver uh, in the first, so whether it's late in the first, earlier, um, and then. Uh, Again, McDuffie. I I've I really grown to really like McDuffie a lot. Um, or they got an Andrew Booth Jr. Um, Stingley, I just I, I would just be a little scared, man. I'd be a little scared with the injuries, but uh, he can ball. And the thing, he can play inside and outside. Um, with McDuffie, he can play inside and outside. Uh, with Sauce, he's an outside guy. Um, so. With the Ravens, they wouldn't necessarily need an outside corner right away. Um, but you can never have enough. Uh, but at the same time, say, for instance, they got Sauce, who's primarily outside guy. Um, you're going to kick Marlon Humphrey to the inside? You're going to let him play the slot? You're going to let Brandon Stevens play the slot? Or Darius Washington? What are you going to do there? Because you're going to have some options. And with a first-round pick, it's like, hey, they got to get on the field. They, they need to be on the field. Um, so, yeah, man. So, my dream scenario for the first night of the draft would be three first-round picks. And I know that probably sounds, to some sounds crazy. And it would be crazy. That's like, that's a lot of first-round picks. That's a lot of first-round picks. I do it in Madden all the time. I usually, in Madden, I usually have like three or four, sometimes five, but 
I usually got quite a bit of first round picks. And that's why I, I always be gotten, having to get rid of people because I can't pay them all. Uh, but anyway, um, I'll be clearing cap penalties a lot, so I'll be cheating. Uh, but, yeah, that, that would be me. That would be me. So, pressure from the interior of the defensive line, a wide receiver uh, for another weapon for the Ravens, um, and also uh, a cornerback. Um, or, actually, there's edge, too. But, yeah, uh, you said my dream scenario. That would be it. Next question came from my guy Rashad. He said, what's up in Graven? It's been a while since I asked a question, but I've been thinking. I'm not going to lie. At first, I wanted us to draft a corner or pass rusher, so I didn't even look at wide receivers in this draft class. But after hearing some names a couple of times in Twitter spaces, I'll admit they started to pique my interest, especially after we let Sammy Watkins sign with the Packers. I just, I, maybe, maybe I'm the only person. I just felt like Sammy Watkins, nothing that he did had any impact on the Ravens whatsoever. Because I, it, I just, I never expected him to be back with the Ravens. So, wherever he signed, if he would have had a visit, if he signed somewhere, which he ended end up doing, I just, I don't think that affected the Ravens at all. Like, one bit. Because after, at, at week, after week 18, we knew that was the last time. Unless you watch, like, highlights or something, or unless you were playing Madden. But after week 18, we knew that was the last time we were seeing Sammy Watkins in a Ravens jersey. I, we knew that. So... I just I, I I never expected him back. But anyway, he said unless we we'll let him we we'll let him crochet and do off the leash, which I doubt. Me too. Uh, I think we could see the Ravens draft a wide receiver early again. Uh, so I was thinking if both Sauce Gardner and Derek Stingley are gone and the top pass rushers are gone, I wouldn't mind getting Lamar another weapon. I think it's a better option than paying someone older a bunch of money, especially when we already know it won't be a proven number one like we've been asking for. Why waste that money on a prove-it deal? I think that gives the Ravens time to pay Lamar and Hollywood, he said I'm crossing my fingers, uh, the following year. Mark is already locked up. I like the idea of everyone else being on rookie deals. If we did take a wide receiver, I think we should take one early. I think Jamison Williams would be a perfect fit. Uh, Hollywood and Bateman with a guy like that, uh, with that kind of speed at wide receiver three. Could be special. Then you add Mark Andrews to it. And it's just crazy. I read somewhere that if it wasn't for his injury, he could have been the first wide receiver drafted. Yeah, I heard that same thing, too. Uh, I don't think we should pass up on a guy like him if he's avail available when it's our turn to pick. But, hey, that's just me. Uh, I'm interested what you think about this. Um, and, yeah, that would certainly be uh, an interesting pick. I just, um, I just don't see the Ravens. Um, cause adding a, adding a speed would be nice. You can never have enough speed. I mean, look at the Dolphins mm, 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 getting Tyreek here. I can't wait to see two and Tyreek seeing how they match each other. Anyway, um, I I just I don't think they're gonna do it in the first. I think they're gonna do it in the second though. Um, as far as the wide receivers, uh, yeah, game changer, big playmaker. Um, <laughs> see, I get a little giddy when we talk about wide receivers and the potential of them being Ravens. Oh, but uh, I'm glad at, I haven't haven't fallen in love with any wide receivers yet. I'm trying to stay away from that because again, I got, I got burned in 2020. 2020 really hurt me bad when it came to wide receivers because first that the DeAndre Hopkins news that came out right before the like right before the draft, and then on top of that, I've Fell in love with the potential of Jerry Judy coming, then the C.D. Lamb coming, and Henry Ruggs. I was like, oh, what do we got one of them? Then they all started just going off the board one by one, and I was like, oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. That was pain for me, man. Um, so this year, I ain't fall in love with really any players like that. But um, So I wouldn't be mad. I, I wouldn't be mad at all. Now, if they did draft a, a, a receiver in the first, um... You did mention about Hollywood. Hopefully, they'll be able to re-sign him. Um, so, he will be the only wide receiver not uh, on a rookie deal. And then, depending on the length of that of his contract, it could possibly run out uh, when Bateman's runs out. Because Bateman has three years left, and then he has a fourth-year option. So, if they would, that would be them signing Hollywood to a three-year extension. Um, it would depend on if they pick up the fifth-year option or not. So, that's still to be determined. Um, and then with the receiver that they drafted now, uh, his 
fourth year would be Bateman's fifth. Uh, so everything would just line up. So they would be able to have their guys and, of course, Mark Andrews, too. Uh, and then, of course, you, you, you kind of need to sign Lamar as well. So, but that's not till next year. Um, but so they, they would have their guys locked up and they would have them locked up for, uh, for a while uh, to give them just a plethora of weapons. Give Lamar a plethora. Like, y'all could put me at, out, out there at quarterback. I mean, I, I could do some stuff now. I wouldn't be no Lamar, but I, I'd be the little, uh, probably like maybe like the dollar store version of Lamar. No, no, not dollar store version. Uh, maybe like um, like the Walmart layaway version. I don't even know if Walmart still do layaway, but that would be me. I'd be the the Walmart Lamar for the Ravens. So let me know if y'all need me. But anyway, um, if if you if I had all them weapons out there, I could make some stuff happen. But with Lamar having all those weapons out there, you know he could make some stuff happen. So, again, whether it's Jameson Williams, whether it's Pickens, who the Ravens going to be picking, um, whether it's Drizzy Drake. I know a lot of people scared of Drake because of um, because Drake London, because he goes to USC, and a lot of USC receivers, they just don't pan out. Um, whoever it may be, Burks. Burks is, eh, Burks is one there too, man, Mr. Do-It-All. Um, but whoever it is, man, uh, it just... Just adding to what we have already. Just adding to on top of what we have already. It could make things just so special. That's all we want. Next question came from my guy Isaac. He said, wide receiver at 14. What's up, Engraven? Wishing on you all the best and to you and yours. I just saw that the Ravens released Boykin, and it got me thinking. Are the Ravens about to take yet another wide receiver in the first round? It makes sense to me. Uh, Ravens have allegedly been in trade discussions for wide receivers like DK and Debo. I, I still, I still haven't, hadn't seen that from anybody of significance or anybody with credibility. Um, we did see the, the, those rumors or whatnot, but just didn't see them from anybody credible. So I don't know if it's true or not. But anyway, he said, and the Ravens are known to zig when everyone thinks they're going to zag. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's saying, oh, oh, that's so true. Um, and that can be a gift and a curse. But anyway, um, he said, what if they're pulling a the wool over our eyes just to draft one more guy for Lamar? Okay, well, keep that wool pulled over our eyes and do that. Uh, if we do go that route, who would you rather take? Uh, Chris Olave, Drake London, or Jamison Williams. Look at that. <laughs> we were just talking about him before. Um, mm, Chris Olave, speed, 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 speed. Um, Drake London, uh, taller frame, um, shiftier than a lot of people give him credit for. Could move the, the yards after the catch as well. Uh, Jamison Williams, <laughs> a little combination of both. Um, Mm. Oh man. Uh whew. I ooh, man. Um probably either Jameson Williams. Probably in the order. Jameson Williams. Um Chris Alave or uh, yeah. So Jameson, Chris Drake. And it's like, and it's super close, but Jameson, Chris, Drake. Um, I feel like you couldn't go wrong with either one of the three. Um, but yeah, so, and, and then as far as the size, like I know uh, Chris is like six, he's like six one. I think Jameson is like six two, and Drake, I think Drake a little taller. Let me see how tall Drake is. I think he like six three, six four, I believe. Uh, but let me just check for sure. Um, Oh, even better, 6'5". Mm. Mm. He actually looks like Drake, too, a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I feel like e either one would be good and beneficial for the Ravens um, because, again, the playmakers, the playmakers, because we just need more game changes. We got some. We got some. But get more. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving? 
Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any, 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 any NFL question, and we answer in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Now, if you want to join all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids, and if you don't want to, that's fine. You ain't got to worry about it. Uh, Team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions, like y'all already heard, and we got some more, too. Let's jump into it. Next question came from my guy Javo. He said, with the draft being a week away, I'm putting you in a GM's fantasy seat. Uh, what would be the perfect draft for you? Since you don't watch college sports, give your followers the position for the first four rounds. But if you want to provide a name, you're more than welcome to. Hope all is well. And let's hope EDC nails this draft since he can't nail free agency. Oh, wow. The pettiness in there. Ooh. Um, first four rounds. Uh, that's hard because you don't know how the board is falling. But first round. Um, first round. Interior def I mean, we kind of just talked about it in the previous question, but first round will be interior defensive lineman um, and either cornerback or wide receiver. Um, second round, wide receiver uh, and edge. Um, oh, you know what? Mm. We, we, need, we need some offensive linemen too. Need more quality there at offensive line. Mm hmm. Wow. Oh, this is tough, man. You just you just made me realize just how um how tough of this draft is. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That is tough because oh my goodness. Ooh. Um. Because you got to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Ronnie Stanley, Jawan, James, big question marks. Uh, wow. So maybe my first round may have to change a little bit. Uh, so first round may be uh, offensive line and interior defensive line. Now, if um, mm, I would probably try to push, try to find a way if I could get back in there. Get, that's a lot of fifth year options, too. But um, if I could try to get back in there again uh, to get offensive line, interior defensive line, and uh, a corner, oh, man, that'd be tough. But if, if, if nobody was willing to trade with me to, for me to get back in this, in this first round, um, then second round be wide receiver, corner, um, or wide receiver and edge. Um, and then I, I would still be thinking about free agency for corner. Uh, then after that, it, it's, it's kind of it gets kind of like bleak because everything like it's, it's 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 so hard to do it just based off of position alone, because again we don't know how things are gonna how the board is gonna fall, uh, which players uh, are gonna end up falling because again that's that's why not every not every player goes to the draft itself because oh man and that's tough too I mean you you know they gonna get drafted but then players that go on the first night come with the suits and all that come all fresh and they don't even get picked it's like oof. But hey, it's it's just part of the process, man. That's the, that's the risk involved, right? I mean, it's a risk by the players going to the draft. If you might not get picked, uh, but it's a risk uh, with the teams that pick these players because they might not work out. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It, it's it, it's it's tough. Uh, but this was a uh, this is a little fun exercise, man. The last question came from my boy Matthew. He said, "I'll keep it short and sweet. I just did a mock and was wondering you and the flock's opinion. Should I get the GM chair or just keep cheering from my couch? Many blessings. No, you, I don't even care what this mock says. You go for your GM role, man. You go get it. You never know. You might be the next GM of the Ravens, man. You could get on that little fifteen year plan that EDC was on and take over. You just got to get in the building. That's the first part, man." Um, he said, uh, in the first round, we received trade, I mean, picks 39 and 30, I mean, 29 and 30, uh, from the chiefs and they get, uh, our 14th overall pick and then our, our third round pick as well. Uh, so at pick 29, we take Trevor Penning, uh, and then where's the 30th? Oh, okay. Then, oh man, you were moving. Then he did another trade. Well, we get the 40th overall pick and the 42nd overall pick from the Seahawks, but they give us no, 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 no. So yeah, yeah, we get the the 40th overall pick and 42nd pick in the second round, but we give them our first rounder, the 30th pick that we got from the Chiefs, and we give them a third round pick, uh, pick number 76, and we give them a fourth round pick, 
pick number 110. So, with that second round pick, we take uh, edge guy Nick Bonito. And then following that up, we take uh, Jalen uh, Petrie. Uh, I'm sure I messed up his name. It's probably like Piter or something. But anyway, we take him from Baylor. And then, ooh, okay. Hey, that's all I needed to see. Draft is done after this. Uh, then in round two, uh, the 45th overall pick, they take George Pickens. I'm done. I ain't got to see no more. I already approve of it right there. Uh, but then he said um, in round four, because uh, they don't have a third round pick because we gave it away. Um, or we gave up two of our third round picks to go back in the second and get those picks. Um, so in round four, we get a cornerback, Cordell Flott. Uh, and also in round four, we get a tackle, Matt Oletsko. Uh, then in round four, oh, in round four, we get a running back from Notre Dame, uh, Kyron Williams. Uh, and then round five, we trade uh, our round. We know, so, no, 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 still in round four. We trade our fifth round. No, no, no. Sorry, I was right. Uh, we trade out uh, of the fifth round. We trade that our fourth round pick to the Saints. And we receive their fifth round pick and a sixth round pick. Um, in the fifth round, we take a linebacker, Jack Sanborn from Wisconsin. And in the, oh, man, you traded again. Dog, you don't stop moving. Uh, then <laughs> he traded away a six-round pick, two six-round picks to move higher in the, is that the fifth round? I can't see it. No, to move higher in the sixth round. Yeah, to move up uh, in the sixth round. And they used that six-round pick that he got from the Vikings. So he traded two six-round two. Pick over 194 and 196 to the Vikings to receive pick 184. Uh, and with 184, he took the, the tight end from Maryland, Chi, um, who Lamar recruited, by the way. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, you're round two, uh, 45th overall pick. That's what had me sold. When I let team keep it clean, they figure out the rest. <laughs>